Good evening. Coming up tonight. We have an update on the Park Place shooting. Plus, I-77 construction updates that will make your commute a little easier. And later, action from this past Friday's women's basketball game. But first, Olivia Spurbeck is in the studio here with us now. Olivia, what weather can we expect to see this weekend? The weather this week is projected to be warm and rainy, so don't forget to pack an umbrella when you go to class. All of the weather forecast for this week and more for you tonight on SGTV Student News at 7. Live from the Kennedy Greenhouse Studio. This is Student News at 7. Good evening, Carolina. I'm Tyler Peroni. And I'm Alex Teeter. Thanks for joining us tonight. A suspect in the March 18th Park Place shooting is now under police custody. Columbia Police found and arrested 18-year-old Brian Cockfield at a relative's home in Hartsville. Investigators say Cockfield was at the apartment complex when a fight broke out on the night of the shooting. Authorities believe Cockfield fired at, at least one of the multiple shots reported at the scene before he left Park Place later that night. He is under custody at the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center, where he is facing charges of unlawful carrying of a pistol and breach of peace of a high and aggravated nature. Convicted killer Alec Murdoch was moved this past weekend to a maximum security prison in South Carolina. This news came from the South Carolina Department of Corrections on Friday afternoon after Murdoch's evaluation process was completed. Murdoch was given two life sentences for the murders of his wife and his son. The South Carolina Department of Corrections Protective Custody Review Board met last Thursday to make a recommendation of a statewide protective custody plan for Murdoch. This review board consists of CD C CSDC security, mental health experts, and classification experts. He was placed into protective custody after this board met on Thursday. Murdoch was moved to an 8x10 cell in a unit with 28 other inmates. Prison officials say that it is important that notorious criminals be separated from the general population in order to keep them safe. The exact prison location where Murdoch is serving his sentence will not be released publicly, also for safety reasons. South Carolina lawmakers are pushing a bill that will give school employees more benefits. If passed, the law will make SC the first state in the southeast that guarantees paid leave to employees welcoming new children to their families. Schools will provide their employees six weeks of paid time if they give birth or adopt a child. A parent who doesn't give birth or isn't the primary care caregiver for the adoption would still receive two weeks of paid leave. New foster parents will also get two weeks. Employees may take this leave any time within 12 months of welcoming the new child. A bipartisan group of over 30 public officials sponsors this legislation, hoping it will improve the current shortage of teachers in the state. The northbound lane of I-77 was closed for construction between Bluff Road and the I-26 interchange. This construction led to traffic disturbances across Columbia, with some drivers being led to take detours up to 20 miles long. The South Carolina Department of Transportation announced yesterday that phase one of the I-77 construction is completed early. For now, all of I-77 near Columbia is temporarily open in both directions. SC Department of Transportation officials said that these closures are allowing crews to repair up to nine bridges on I-77. Phase Phase two of this project will repair eight bridges on I-77 southbound lanes. This construction is part of a larger statewide 10-year plan, pro plan project to repair hundreds of bridges and roads across South Carolina. Construction on the southbound lanes of I-77 will begin on April 14th. Coming up after the break, the latest in Gamecock sports stay close. SGTV News 4 sports reporter Spencer Ball has the scoop. What have you got for us, Spencer? Gamecock women's basketball's undefeated season came to an end at the hands of Iowa in the national championship semifinal game. SGTV's own Violet Raftery was in Dallas. Let's check out the action from the game. South Carolina's dominant, undefeated run came to an end tonight with the loss to the Iowa Hawkeyes in the final four. The Hawkeyes outscored the Gamecocks 77-73. Leading the offense for Iowa was Naismith Player of the Year, Caitlin Clark, who found open shots and teammates all night long. Zaya Cook kept the Gamecocks in the contest with Aaliyah Boston getting into foul trouble early. Cook led the team with 24 points. And Raven Johnson added 13 points, 11 of which came in the second half, but it wasn't enough for the Gamecocks to pull ahead. 
Clark finished with 41 points and 8 assists as the Hawkeyes cemented their victory. In the end, it marked the first loss for South Carolina this season under remarkable head coach Don Staley. I, I take the good with the bad. Like, I'm a, you know, I'm a sore loser, but I, I'm, a, I'm a gracious loser. I'm going to give credit where credit is due. Iowa played a, had a terrific game plan, um, and we, we didn't get it done. We, there were opportunities. There were three turnovers we had in a row that, that were somewhat of a game changer for us that if we had them back, you know, we could probably open up a lead that would have put us over the top, but wasn't in the cards. It was, you know, we did that to other teams and we ended up winning. So we got to take it, you know, we got to take the good with the bad. I'm never, I'm never going to turn my back on the game of basketball. It's just giving too much to me. I'm still, I'm still favored, still favored. The LSU Tigers, who beat Virginia Tech this evening, will be the Hawkeyes' opponent in the national championship game on Sunday. And for the Gamecocks, an incredible season was closed out after a strong tournament run. For SGTV News 4 Sports, I'm Violet Raftery. Thanks, Violet. They'll look to continue their success next season in year 16 of the Staley era. After each team getting a game apiece, Gamecock Baseball Series went to the rubber match this weekend with a crucial Sunday game deciding the winner of the SEC showdown against Mississippi State. The Gamecocks returned to Duty Noble Field after their Saturday shelling 13-3 with a chip on their shoulder. The offense would rise to the occasion, tallying 17 hits on the night and sending 14 runners to home plate. They were once again led by freshman phenom Ethan Petrie, who leads the team with a 442 batting average and 42 RBIs. This week will prove to be massive for the Gamecocks as they travel to Charlotte to take on the 13th ranked University of North Carolina Tar Heels in Charlotte tomorrow night. And after that midweek slate, they'll return to Founders Park on Thursday to host the number one team in the nation, the LSU Tigers. For SGTV News 4, I'm Spencer Ball. Thanks, Spencer. Coming up after the break, News 4 entertainment reporter Rachel Carter will lay down the talk of the town. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. Joining me now is entertainment reporter Rachel Carter to fill us in on what's happening in Columbia this weekend. What do you have for us, Rachel? The University of South Carolina Department of Theater and Dance is presenting its production of Little Shop of Horrors, a science fiction Broadway musical. The production is directed by Jessica Francis Fitcher and Abigail McNeely, featuring a team of guest artists from around the United States, including choreographer Kim Ball, musical director Ayush Joshi, and sound designer Kate Ruckert. The musical will be performed by 14 undergraduate students of USC's theater program. The performances for Little Shop of Horrors will begin this Friday, April 7th, with the final performance being held next Friday, April 14th. The musicals will be held at Drayton Hall Theater at 8 o'clock p.m. with an additional matinee showing at 3 o'clock p.m. this Saturday. Admission is $15 for students, $20 for USC faculty, and $22 for the general public. Tickets can be purchased at sc.universitytickets.com or at the door. You know, I'm really looking forward to seeing Little Shop. I'm going actually with some friends from my theater class next Tuesday. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, uh, we have to write a report on a play. We all love the movie. So we figured, what better than to yeah. go see Little I'm Shop? I'm jealous. I've never actually seen it, so maybe I'll have to yeah, stop my, by. Yeah, my high school did a live production of it. It was fantastic. Awesome. Well, in other news, the Vista Neighborhood Association and the Vista Guild are presenting the first annual Alley Golf in the Vista this Thursday, April 6th. The event, held in honor of the 2023 Masters Tournament, will feature three mini golf holes, each set up on different alleyways of the Vista area, including the Hyatt Place, Twisted Spur, and Old Chicago. Players who purchase the $10 scorecard have a chance to win prizes for first and second place finishes, as well as random drawings throughout the duration of the event, which spans from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. The holes can be played in any order, and all completed scorecards will be entered into a drawing for prizes. Admission to watch the tournament is free, and guests are encouraged to browse around the Vista area and its many businesses. You know, I'm looking forward to this tournament. I might play in it. Who knows? I'm really bad at golf, but I like No, tennis. I am too. I'm good at <laughs> mini golf, though. Hey, so I mean, hopefully it'll be more like mini golf. Hopefully it's more of a putt-putt. My stepdad yeah. tried to teach me golf. I did not quite get it, uh, unfortunately. But that's all your entertainment news for tonight. Coming up after the break, Olivia Spurbeck will let you know if this warm weather sticks around. We'll be right back. 
everyone, I'm Olivia Spurbeck and here's a look at tonight's forecast. So right now it is 58 degrees and the moon is in a waxing gibbous phase, which basically means that it's between half and full and it's getting bigger. The wind is 7 miles per hour and the humidity is 79%, so I wouldn't curl your hair, made that mistake before. And it's supposed to be partly cloudy with a UV index of 0 out of 10. So I wouldn't wear sunscreen this week, but if you're ginger, that might be different. Sunset will be at 7.46 p.m. tonight. So for the weather this week, for a little preview, it's going to be warmer, and the warmer days this week will be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. The warmer nights will also be Wednesday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And then there'll be some thunderstorms on Thursday and a lot of rainy days ahead. So looking at the weather this week, today it is a high of 74 and a low of 58. And it's supposed to be rainy. And tomorrow it's mostly cloudy, getting a little bit warmer with the high being 85 degrees. Wednesday it's supposed to get even warmer at a high of 89 degrees. So I would make sure to bring an umbrella to class that day, for sure, instead of a rain jacket. And Thursday, getting a little colder, but still pretty warm, at a high of 86 degrees and a low of 65 degrees. Friday, dropping to, into the 60s, with a high of 68 degrees and showers. And Saturday, dropping even lower, with a high of 53. That's all I have for tonight. After the break, we'll have tonight's edition of Carolina Canines. You don't want to miss it. Stay with us. And finally, tonight's Carolina Canine features JoJo. JoJo was submitted by News 4 member Aaron Smith. JoJo is a seven-year-old golden doodle who likes belly rubs. In her free time, you can find JoJo enjoying walks in her neighborhood. Now, Tyler, I don't know about you, but I don't think there's much golden left in that doodle. No, not really. It looks more like a crispy marshmallow, like it should be in the middle of a s'more to me. <laughs> you gotta <laughs> smash them into crackers. <laughs> that wraps up tonight's edition of Student News at 7. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at SGTV at USC. To keep up with all of our content, be sure to also visit us online at SGTVonline.com. For SGTV News 4, I'm Alex Teeter. And I'm Tyler Peroni. From all of us here at SGTV, have a great night, Carolina. Forever to be.